Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to another video. This is Richard with One Call Closers. And guys, really quick, um, in this video, we had one of our top sales reps, right? She is closing 80 to 90% of her deals are one call closes. And so what I asked her to do is I brought her on board to train one of our sales teams that were selling a real estate product around. And she came, her name is Marisa, and she came on board and she gave her process for getting over objections and conquering objections like nobody else, how to treat the call, how to really get a prospect to the point where they wanna give you money over the phone and close a deal in one call. I think you're gonna love this training. It's about 40 minutes long or so and really dial in to what she's saying, but also how she's saying it, her demeanor. And she's gonna give you a lot of cool tips on this call on how to become a great sales professional, just like herself. She's closing about $300,000 or more every single month for One Call Closers. So really pay attention, guys. And again, my name is Richard Michika. We own onecallclosers.com. If you don't know who I am, we have a sales agency uh, where we sell for big time influencers in the online space, like, you know, Bedros Koulian, who sold for Dean Graciosi, Tony Robbins, um, you know, Onyx Signal and, and others in the space. And, and a little a little over three years, we've sold over $40 million online. So I feel like I'm qualified to talk about the subject and we just close a lot of deals, right? So um, hopefully you find this valuable. See you in the training. Happens. That's the only time there's change is that you have to have resistance because in that resistance, you're now able to help the client see how that behavior is not working for them and help them find solutions to find other ways to now be more successful in their interactions, whatever that be relationship work, whatever they're, whatever it is, right? Same with sales, guys. If you don't say what's on your mind, you're not helping your client. You're not helping the student. Um, you can only help them by being honest with them. So this is where emotional intelligence kicks in. Because I see, um, I see closers do this, like where they're kind of like hard headed and they challenge. Um, it might work for some people, but overall you can't challenge people because now you're, you're coming up like a salesperson, right? Like you're desperate for the sale. You don't need the sale. You're qualifying these people. They need you. So keep that in mind. They're, you're not, they're not there because you need them. They need you. That's why they're on the phone. So if somebody says something like what happened the other day? Um, oh, it was okay. I was talking to one of my colleagues and and he mentioned like, oh yeah, he said, you know, the student said this. And I was kind of like in my head thinking like, well, I don't get it, right? I said, well, why didn't you ask it? Like, if you didn't get it, say it. Like, hey, I'm a little confused. You're saying A, but you're also saying B. Like, what is it? Which one is it, right? You, you have to confront things. So if you're thinking it, like you say it. So give me an example, Rich. Do you have like an example of something that like would need to be said? Like what you're thinking, you know? I don't have, I, does anybody have an example get, like that maybe on a call of yesterday or today or that? that yeah, do you guys have something that like you wish you would have said or you thought it in the call, but you didn't say it? That would be helpful because then I can kind of walk you through that process. I know Christian's got something. No? No, no. no? I, don't, I, don't I can't see you, Christian. So Christian, I'm gonna use you as an example. I listened to one of your calls the other day, not the whole thing, only listened to the first 20 minutes. Um, great call. Christian, when it comes to connection, body language and tonality, Christian rocks it. Um, Christian's very laid back, he's very confident. Um, non, you guys, if you don't have your cameras on during calls, it's a disservice. I don't know if you know this, but research shows that 80% of communication is nonverbal. So if you're only using the phone, you're working really hard for that close. <laughs> Okay, because they can't see you. so much as is, 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 is um, communicated through our nonverbal, even like with me talking to you guys now, right? <laughs> um, so with Christian, that call, great call. Um, this guy was on the phone. He was ready. He had money. Um, he had a really bad past. He had lost everything. He lost every property minus the one that he was living in. He took him 10 years, 10 years to recover. Call's great. The place where I think the missing link was, was twisting the knife on that pain. Saying like, oh my, what was his name? Richard. Richard. Yeah, it was my brother's name. Richard. Wait, I want to back up a little bit. <laughs> Hold <laughs> on. You lost every property, but the property you're in. Yes. Wow. <laughs> how did that happen? Like, you really need to figure out how did that happen? Like, I want to know, Richard, like, what was your process of even buying these properties? Where did you find these properties? He was going to tell you probably the MLS, okay? 
And he probably said like, oh, off the MLS, da, da, da. okay. So that's something you can use. That's ammo because we don't use the MLS, right? With Springboard. That's how you're able to get things off market, under market value. So when the economy drops 15%, guess what? You're still ahead. <laughs> so he wouldn't have, that wouldn't have happened to him if he used Thatch. So that needed to be connected for him. I don't know if you connected that Christian because I didn't listen to the end, okay? I only listened to the beginning part. Um, also, he mentioned that it took him 10 years to recover. I would have really dug into like, oh my gosh, how have the last 10 years been? Like how, like how much work did it go into getting you back to where you're at today? Are you married? Do you have kids? How did it impact your wife? I mean, that's a big, that's a big, that's a big hit in a marriage. I would have really gone into those areas because someone like that might kind of, men, especially men, <laughs> not no knock to men, but you know, sometimes they can kind of, you know, think that they're great, even when things are bad, right? Um, so he thought, he, even though it was bad, he still thought he was head honcho. He had all these properties, but yeah, you lost them all, you know? So he needs to know, like, you suck, yeah. you lost them. Like, how did he lose them? He got scammed. He said he got scammed out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Dude, like, how did you get scammed out of hundreds of thousands of dollars? Now, looking back, Richard, like, how did you fall for that? Like, do you, have you ever thought about how did that even happen and have them talk to you talk it out like, well, you know, I was new, I was doing it on my own. You know, I trusted somebody. Well, who did you trust? Like, who did you put hundreds of thousands of dollars of trust into? Like, I, those are important things because if you don't draw that out at the end, the close is going to be very hard because they've been screwed. When people crash and burn guys, you need to tell them they crashed and burned. So when someone says they've lost a lot of money in coaching programs or real estate, just go, oh my gosh, you've crashed and burned. <laughs> and then they'll be like, yeah, I have just go, but you know what the good thing is you're here. So you still want it. You want success. And um, you guys, something Steve jobs. I don't know if you guys know Steve jobs. He's an Apple guy. This is a very good thing about Steve jobs. You guys should use this on calls. Just go. I don't know if you guys know Steve jobs, you know, he's the Apple guy, the big guru. He, unfortunately he passed away, right. Of cancer. Just go. I love listening to him. Do you just say it out how I say it? Okay, guys, even if it's a lie, um, <laughs> I love listening to him. Just go, you know, I was listening to an interview with Steve Jobs and Steve Jobs is talking about successful people. Like why are some people massively successful and other people just aren't? And you know what Steve Jobs said, Christian? He said that people who are massively successful, they are willing to crash and burn, but get up and do it again. So guess what? You are on the other side of being massively successful because you crashed and burned, but you're here. That's powerful, guys, because Steve Jobs holds a lot of weight. He's massively successful. These are his words, not mine. And it's also now empowering them that like, oh my God, like, yeah, like I can do this. Like I'm here. I want the success. It empowers them. You're transferring. Um, you're, you're transferring belief. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. You guys with coaching, I'm not sure, you know, with coaching, you guys need to realize that when people are being coached, um, they're being coached because they lack the confidence. They lack the how. They know where they want to go. Um, Thatch knows how to get them there, right? So what they're doing is you need to bridge that how gap. They need to walk over to the other side. So how do they do that? They get coached by Thatch and Mark and Stephanie. Why? Because they're going to borrow their confidence, their how, until they can internalize it. Once they can internalize it, they soar. They're on their own. So same thing on the sales call, guys. These people are, are inconfident. They're indecisive. They're hesitant. They're fearful. So what do we do? We're their coach. <laughs> now we have to be that person who's going to instill confidence, instill certainty, instill hope, um, change, all these things. We have to transfer that onto our, our prospect. Does that make sense, guys? So it's a parallel process, actually, between what you're doing with, with them getting on board with that and what they're doing with you on the phone. It's the same thing. Now, oh, anybody have questions? I don't want to, I just have a question, but. No, I, I love what you said about just, you know, qualifying. Cause at the end of the day, guys, like we are the gatekeepers, right? And we have to put a red rope around what we do. And instead of us having to sell the prospect, it's almost like having a prospect, having to sell us, right? By asking some of those questions that Marisa was talking about, qualifying them for time, um, and everything, you know, finances and getting all that stuff out of the way early on before determining, does it make sense to pursue the call? Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You guys, um, don't waste your time. You're not here to sell people. If you focus on sales and selling people, you're never going to be great. You might get by, but you're not going to be great. <laughs> and I would even say guys, if you only master the science of sales, you can, you can get by. If you only master the, the art of sales, you can do good, but you need both to be great because um, it's a dance. It's a dance between the two, okay? Um, so now when you're in your, your call, guys, and you're, you, you are doing the discovery, 
you have to be very clear of what they need. Okay. So you cannot, and it's hard because you get people who are like, well, I really don't know. Did I just go? Yeah, just go. I get it. You don't know what you don't know, but you know, just, you know, knowing a little bit about, you know, real, real, quick, real quick, real quick. Do, do, but do you see how Marisa says it? Like, yeah. do you see her face? Did you just see her facial expression? Like, oh, you don't know what you don't know. Like, but her tonality, like those little things, guys. And when Reese is taking a call, do you see how close she is to the camera right now? Do you see how you can just see her face in the camera? This is how she closes people. She's literally right here, just looking at them and talking to them like they're right next to her. And she she just does like, but those little things matter. I think I think those you little things matter. You have to be there, you guys. You're you're there to help them. They have to know that you genuinely want to help them. And guess what? If you can't help them, you get them off the phone. And I've had moments where, like, I I'll tell you a story that I just had the other day. I had a gentleman get on the phone. He was there for a program, uh, uh, for an affiliate program, and he had spent over you know ten thousand dollars starting his econ business. Right. You also have to have ethics in this, guys. And he was telling, I said, well, I don't get it. I said, you know, you've already spent over 10 K on getting your econ business up. Why on earth did you want to start an affiliate business? He's like, well, the automation, yada, yada, yada. He was talking about automation. I don't want to get too lost in the details, but I know that you can automate econ. <laughs> so I said, well, I said, let me ask you, um, Rick, is the automation the only thing holding you back from going all in with your econ business? He's like, yeah, pretty much. I said, well, then I said, you need, you need to stop. I said, you need to get coaching for econ. I said, you need to join Adrian Morrison. <laughs> Adrian Morrison's the highest guru. I said, have you heard of Adrian? He's like, well, yeah, I have Shopify. So we started having this discussion. So basically I told him, you don't need this. You need this. Let's reconnect when you have the, he didn't have the money, but I got him off the phone because what I had was not a good fit for him. So you guys have to have good ethical practices, knowing where people are. So that guy was very nice. He actually, he's, we're going to reconnect for Adrian Morrison, but you want to have good ethics. And then also if they get on the phone and they're just being jerks and they're just like not getting anywhere with you and they're not giving you any information, don't sit there and beg for them to engage with you. I would just tell them nicely, just go, oh my gosh, just go, John, you know, I'm here. I sense that you 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 want coaching with that, but I don't sense that it's really a good time for you. You, you seem very happy with where you're at. I don't really sense that you're really excited about this or have an urgency. I mean, it sounds like even though like you've been doing this on your own and you haven't gotten the results that you're, you, you wanted, it seems like you're okay with that. <laughs> I'm not sure if we should really go on. And then a lot of times they'll be like, oh yeah, you're right. And continue being a jerk and get off the phone. Or they'll be like, no, 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 Marisa, I do need this. Exactly. And if they're serious, they'll reel themselves back yeah, in. Yeah, and if they don't, get off the phone because you're not going to close them anyways. You're spinning your wheels. 100%. So you have to know when you have to know when to go forward and when to pull back. Okay, guys. Um, and then it's also, it's so important to know exactly what they need to be successful. Okay. So for instance, like with Christian's guy, um, uh, he needed to know how to find properties. That was the main thing. He needed to know how to find properties. Um, he needed to know, um, how to eval, you know, I'd be like, oh, you know, how did you find your properties? I'd say like in the past, you know, what type of eval, um, tools did you use? They're probably like, oh. you know, it's like, they're like, I didn't use any. I just, you know, I just listened to, I don't know. They're, they're not gonna have an answer. So they're stupid. So they, it's good. You want them to feel stupid because <laughs> that's why they need you. They need you to make, you need, they need to be smart. <laughs> right. So you need to figure those things out guys. So that when you're pitching it, you're like, Hey, just go, you know how you lost 10 properties and you got burned and it's taking you 10 years to get you where you are today. Just go, that's just going to show you how to find properties. And we don't use the MLS. I could have, I could have told you that was going to happen to you. That's why you use our system because now you're finding properties under market value. So guess what? When the economy tanks 15, 20%, you're still on top. You got 30% margin in that deal. Yeah, you got, you got it. Yeah, you got the margins there. And guess what? That's why Thatch has never tanked. That's why he consistently does well, even during 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 recessions, even during inflation. Just go now. So these are important things, guys. That's gonna be like, well, they're gonna get excited. Now they're gonna be like, oh man, I got a hundred thousand saved. I'm ready to spend it. Excited. Yeah, you got to get them excited. Um, you know, let me tell you this, you know, it sounds like you've had a lot of like, you know, you haven't had a lot of clear clarity in what you're doing direct direction. Just go, you know, we're going to collect you to our private network, our private network, you're getting daily direct access to that Mark and Stephanie for a lifetime. Just go, how do you think you're going to do this time, Richard, having that Mark Stephanie in your corner for the entire duration of your career, let them get excited. Richard, how do you think your financial goals are going to be impacted? Always knowing how to evaluate a property and whether that property is good or bad. You know what I say? So now you're, you're bringing, you're bringing excitement, but you're bringing so much logic and reason to why he needs this. Okay. Does that, does that make sense guys? Yes. Okay. So you have to tie, 
You don't want to just spew um, features and benefits. You want to talk about the features and benefits, no doubt. That's what they're buying. But you have to tie it to everything they say. That's why, guys, discovery. <laughs> you got to do the discovery right. Cannot emphasize that enough. Okay, so you're tying everything to that. And you get them to commit. You get them to say it themselves. Like, how do you think your, you know, your, your career is going to go? How do you think your portfolio is going to be impacted? How do you think your financial goals? How do you think your, how do you think your marriage is going to do now? You know, catching up from this bankruptcy that you were just in, you said you were almost split up. Like, you know, you, you tie it back to what they said, because now you're, you're, you're anchoring it. And it also shows that you're listening and you care. Okay. Um, once you share everything, you guys, <laughs> The next step is very important. You have to say, okay, Todd, just go, you know, what I want to know, is this exactly what you need to be successful? Is this what you need to get that 100K today and start buying a property? <laughs> Tie it down to his specific situation. And then if he goes, yeah, I think so. That's not certainty, guys. Yeah, I think it sounds good. That's not excitement. I, I need to call him out on it. Richard, just go, I sense that perhaps maybe there, there's some hesitation and you're, you're not certain. Like, tell me your thoughts. Well, you know, I'm a little, you know, it's group coaching. It's got me a little concerned. Got it. Tell me a little bit, you know, what have you concerned about the group coaching format? Well, I've been on co coaching calls before and, you know, I'm just listening to other people talk. And, you know, a lot of times it isn't they're not even relevant to what I need. And I feel like I wasted a whole hour. We get this all the time, right? And just go, oh, okay, I get it. So you feel like you spent a lot of time on group coaching platforms and it was just like, you were listening to stuff that didn't even pertain to you. And you just felt like you wasted your time. And he's like, yeah, he's like, I just don't want that to happen again. Just go, I get it. Just go, the great thing about our group coaching calls is that this isn't just Q and A. It sounds like you were on a lot of just Q and A type coaching calls. Go, this is where Thatch comes and he brings the thunder. He brings the content. <laughs> so you're, 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 you're basically in his university for that hour. Just go, yeah, there's Q and A. And guess what? The Q and A lasts until the last question's asked. So if you have a question, it's going to get answered. And it seems like that's your concern. And he's like, oh, okay, good, good. You have to address it in that moment because in that moment, if you move on, you're not going to sell it. He's not, he's not certain. They have to have certainty. Okay. So you have to have clarity. They have to have certainty. <laughs> okay. So how would you sense? rebound on that? What? So you've, you've clarified it with them. You, you, you gave them the certainty. Now, how would you tie back? Okay. So then you go, Awesome. Just go. Um, so then from here, let me go back into the sales call. So then you go, they go, search and just go awesome. Just go. The reason you're on the call with me, Richard, is that, you know, Thatch does not want to work with dabblers. This is not the platform for it. He only wants to work with students who want to build a serious, serious real estate business. Okay. So I want to make sure, does this level of coaching resonate with where you want to go? Again, you're getting them a commit. So now they said that is exactly what they want. Now they're saying like, yeah, this, that they're committed to it. <laughs> right? Their commitment levels there. Just go, that's awesome. Just go, you know, this is a program where you get immediate traction. We want to get you going on your goals. So you're going to be having a welcome call with Thatch, Mark and Stephanie. They want to meet you. They want to answer some of your, you know, beginner questions. And then we want to get you rocking. You know, so what I need to know from you is that if we invite you into this program, I need to know for certain, Thatch needs to know for certain that you're going to show up. You're going to fully immerse yourself into our ecosystem and that you're going to be coachable. Again, you're getting them to commit. Yes. You're gay. So all these commitments, guys, it's a psychological process. They're saying yes. And then you guys, during discovery, let me back up. Sorry, guys. When you're going through discovery, the thing that you know, you know, you're doing discovery, right? When they're telling you, oh, exactly, Marisa, that's exactly how I feel. Yes. That you you want to hear the words exactly. I couldn't say it better than that. Yes. Oh my gosh, like, yes, that's, ex that, that's it. That's it. You that's said it better I'm than me. Those are really good signs that you're doing your job right. If you're not getting that, you got to keep on asking questions until you get it or else you're not going to close the deal because <laughs> there's no trust. There's no, there's no true. Um, it's, it's not, there's a, a, a disalignment. Okay, guys. So, so you don't move into pitching the price until you know that they want this, they need it. They committed to it. Okay. They might go. Yeah. And so then you go, okay, awesome. Just go. Are you ready? Are you ready to jump? Are you ready to do this? I'm super excited to get you started. You have to be excited for them. And they go, yeah, I just don't know, you know, the money. Just go, okay, awesome. Yeah, there's definitely an investment, you know, um, it's lifetime coaching. It's expensive. Just go, let's get into that because that's part of the fit. Just go, but do you have any other questions for me before I get into the pricing? Right? Make sure you get any other question out of the way. 
Then when it goes into pricing, I don't know how you guys lay it down. I usually go, okay, what Thatch has done and how he structured his program is he actually has reduced the typical rate of, I don't know, $10,000 and he's actually reduced it to 6,000. You can either split that into you know, two payments of 3,000. If you pay in full, you save $1,000 off Richard, which reduces your tuition to 5,000 for lifetime coaching. Okay, um, always with Thatch's program, you guys, you have to emphasize lifetime, 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 lifetime. That's your selling feature. This is a lifetime program. That's cool. For $5,000, I would do the math on that. Break it up and find out how much you're paying per, per day for the next five years. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it makes sense. Yeah, because when they say no, you have to come. So then, so then now, the guys, you, you pitch the price. So now most people are not automatically going to be okay like, giving you the money. They might kind of sit with it. Oh, well, let me know, you know, Richard, what works for you? Does a full pay, does a split pay? Well, I don't know, you know. Um, I wasn't really expecting it to be that much. Da, da, da. Validate it. Don't just overlook it. Just go, yeah, just go. It's expensive. It sounds like you're a little sticker shocked. <laughs> Laugh, okay? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Make it lighthearted. Make it, you have to, you guys. And when people give you objections, your energy has to go up. Because I'll tell you why. Um, the person who is questioning it, they're not confident. They're, uh, they're a little, they're fearful. Fear. It's fear. They're human. They're not a robot. Acknowledge that. Just go, you know, it sounds like, you know, maybe a little bit of fear is kicking in. You know, you're, you're human, Richard. You're not a robot. Just go, let's talk this. Let's talk this through. Tell me your thoughts. And I would sit and let him talk. Um, let him share his concerns. Let him share. He might, you know, whatever it is. Well, you know, my daughter's getting married and, you know, I have the cash, but I just don't know if it's wise for me to spend it, yada, yada, yada. You have to listen, guys. And I'd say, oh, Richard, you know what? It may not be wise to spend your cash. I agree with you. Maybe it's not wise. Just go, but what I would say is it's also not wise to do nothing. Um, you're ready to go. You have a lot of money to get you where you want to go. You just need the blueprint and that guidance. Just go, I'm curious, you know, what if you were to put it on a credit card and just pay yourself back so you can get started? Because that's why you're doing this. You want more cash, right? And then, they, and then they kind of go, oh, well, I do have a credit card. Um, I just don't know. And then you have to sit with them and kind of like, let them talk it out. Listen, you have to listen. And then you go, well, you know, what I tell people is I go, you know what, Richard, I, this is what I always tell people when they're making a really big life-changing commitment. Okay. Is there's a few questions you really have to ask yourself. And I think the first question is you have to be confident that Thatch, Mark, Stephanie, our springboard team, you know, that do they, do they have the knowledge? Do they have the expertise? Do they have the experience? Do they have the reputation to really take you, Richard, where you want to go? They always say yes. 99% of the time they say yes. Okay. They'll go, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm here. You know, I love his bird method. I really want to learn it. Yada, yada, yada. Just go awesome. Just go, do you want to coach with Thatch? Do you want to be part of our team? Do you want to be in Thatch? Do you want Thatch and Stephanie in your corner for the next, for the, for your duration of your career? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Da, da, da. Tell me why. Let them reinforce themselves why they mm -hmm. need the coaching. Then from there, you have to go, okay, Richard, do you have access to $5,000? <laughs> yeah. And then what I do is I go, come on, Richard, you got to convince me why you're not doing this. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. And you have to be very honest with them because it doesn't make sense. And then they're usually like, yeah, you're right. I think I'm just a little scared. And just go, oh, you have to be scared. Just go fear is part of the process. You are challenging yourself. You want to go to places that you've never been. So guess what? You're growing. It's uncomfortable. You're going to be fearful, but guess what? You have two choices right now, Richard. You can let the fear um, hold you hostage and where you're at and, and, and keep you from taking opportunity, or you can use the fear to get on the other side of success. Because guess what's on the other side of fear? It's success. Everything you want. Everything you want. Yes. And everything has a cost, right? You're either going to pay the $5,000 now or you're going to cost with your time, right? And not getting out all the Yeah, and you, you may have to go there. But a lot of times, you, you know, after you say that, you just go, you know, I want this so bad for you, Richard. I know you need this. You have to jump. You gotta do Are it. you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. And you get them excited, guys. And they, they typically will jump. <laughs> um, they'll be like, okay, let's do it. And I get really excited. Oh, I'm so excited for you. Right. And you have to come on. Right. So, so a lot of it, guys, is it's you have to, you just, you're a coach. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. You're yeah. a coach. I think of it as a therapy session for me. Um, I'm just getting somebody <laughs> to recognize their resistance and how they need to address, you know, how to better manage that resistance to get them where they want to coach. Okay, guys. $2.73 um, a day for five years, guys. So, yeah, you have That's to less get than $3. Enough. 
And pull out your calculators, guys. I pull out my phone. I go, hold on, hold on. You just told me you made ten thousand dollars, but you're working sixty hours. I said, let's find out how much you're really making. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, you have to. <laughs> and you guys, you guys have to do that because people are just. You have to realize people are human. So, although they're unhappy and they're not, they're not where they want to be in life because they're comfortable, they will just stay there. It's really sad. Um, they'll stay there regardless of their unhappiness. So the only way they can make major changes in their life is they have to make major decisions. You got to be decisive or else you're just going to continue. And you have to be honest with them guys at the end of the call, if they're saying still no, after what I did, you have to go, you know what, Richard, just go, you can do it on your own. Just go, we already know what happened in the past, right? Past behavior, you know, predicts future behavior. Just go. And it sounds like you want to do it on your own still, but you you're expecting a different outcome. Just go, I don't know about you, but that's a cycle of insanity. You got to call them out on it. It's a cycle of insanity. And then they, they realize, they go, oh my gosh, I know. Oh, you're right. Well, if I'm right, then what on earth? What, tell me your thought process. <laughs> Explain it to me. Because they, 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 they can't. So at that point, they're tongue tried so that there's no other option but to jump. And then again, you just go back into you, you have to jump. This is your journey. I, 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 know, you, I, I, I know you need this, but I can't jump for you. <laughs> you, you got to do it. Right. So those are things that you have to, you have to stay in the clothes. And when you guys, when you've done the right job during discovery, you can stay in the clothes for six, seven, eight times. Yeah. And it doesn't feel like pressure. It feels like help. So like this guy, Todd, I was in the clothes with him probably for 25 minutes. And at the end, after I closed him, I got his money. I told him, I said, Todd, I'm really proud of you. That was hard. That was a hard decision. He's like, Thank you for acknowledging that, Marisa. That was really hard. <laughs> I said, I know. I said, but come on. I said, now things are going to be different. I said, you were, you were going to do the same thing over and over again. <laughs> I was like, you know, so you have to, then you, you commend them because being decisive and tell them decisiveness is so important in life. Successful people, they're, they're, they're resourceful, they're committed, but you know what? They're decisive. They take action. They, they do it. Right. So anyways, I know it's a mouthful. Is there anything, um, any objections you guys want to go over that are specific? or call. I don't know if we have time, Rich. Do we have time? Shot. I think everybody, everybody have a little bit of time still. Yeah. I don't think anyone really got called. To got time. This is, this is gold. Marisa. This, I, I, I'm learning stuff. Yeah. I'm feeling, this is like, this is magic sauce yeah. right here. Well, this I don't know how magic. you're learning stuff. I feel like I learned everything from you. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, man. It's good. Uh, good. Marissa, when you, when there's someone who feels overwhelmed, like there's a lot of content in springboard, there's, there's so much to go through. Uh, mm -hmm. One, how do you recommend paring that down? Obviously, you really want to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. And two, in they're using that as a, as a cover for fear. <laughs> you know, they're using that as a as sort of a uh, something to hide, a blanket to hide under. You know, it's mm -hmm. just so much. I don't know. I don't. It's just so much information. Yeah. So many things I'm going to get and things I have to watch and listen to. You know how because then it is just fear, like you said. Mm -hmm. and, and there's you, truth to it with that? yeah it, but there's a lot of truth to what they're saying too i'm sorry i don't know who you, I'm, i can't see your chris. name, name chris. Oh, chris. Okay. Chris. Nice yeah. to meet you chris um okay so when somebody says that it's true so what i would do is you always validate their feelings validation you guys makes people feel so good <laughs> you know when you're having a, a crappy day and someone just acknowledges that yeah my god that is crappy you just feel so much better because you feel like you're not being unreasonable right so what yeah. i would say is go oh my gosh john you know you're right it is a lot it's a lot of information it can be over overwhelming. Whenever you're doing something like this, you have to imagine there's just so many moving pieces. It's a giant jigsaw puzzle. But this is why you're here, because now it sounds like you really want help putting this jigsaw puzzle together with people who've done this over and over again versus on your own. Just go. So this is <coughs> about our program. And I'm guessing this is towards the end, right? <laughs> Where is this coming in? Because that matters. He hasn't, taken any calls matters yet. He, hasn't, he hasn't taken any calls yet, but he's about to. Okay, so if you get this like, at the end, then I would say, you know, just go, that's why you're getting linked to our university, because that's going to give you the blueprint, but we don't want to just give you a bunch of information and leave you hanging. Now we want to help you feel confident with execution and implementation. So that's where you're going to get your coaching. You're going to get linked to our network where you have solutions for every challenge that comes your way, because we know it can be overwhelming. And guess what? By yourself, you'll drown. <laughs> you'll drown. It's, it's so much to figure out on your own. And you guys have to make sure you let them know that, you know, the biggest piece here is momentum. Momentum fuels success. So if you're spending, like for instance, if you get somebody on the phone who tells you they're working 40 plus hours a week, you have to point out to them like, oh my gosh, like you work a lot of hours. 
that's a lot of hours that you're dedicating a week. Just go, you don't have a lot of time. And they'll be like, yeah, I don't. I have like maybe one or two hours, yada, yada, yada. Just go, you know, that's, you know, people who are busy, they typically have to get coaching or mentorship. And I'll tell you why. Your time is so limited. So the time you have is so valuable that if you spend it trying to figure it out, Google research, um, YouTube, you're killing so much momentum. And when you kill that moment, time kills momentum and, and time is money. You have to get traction towards your goals or so you're going to lose focus. You're going to give up. That's just the human nature. You, you have to get momentum. So that's where we, you know, where that just create what he's created is to address a lot of these issues, right? But you don't ever pitch, don't go into program features and details, guys, in the beginning when this conversation's coming up. Um, you just kind of briefly touch on things, but don't start selling because that's a salesperson. You don't want to be that person. So many people in the beginning of the conversation, people will mention things and they start spewing all this great stuff about the program. Dude, don't do that. You don't even know if they need the program. <laughs> <laughs> so don't start spewing anything. You just kind of validate, generalize, and then move forward with the conversation. Okay. Did that help, Chris? I'm not sure if that, let me know if I need to go deeper on that, if that was helpful. Yeah, I've just done the role play call with Mike, but that's what he threw at me. Yeah, yeah. Just make sure you're always, you validate it, Chris. So it's validating. You acknowledge what they said. Like, oh my gosh, you're right. It's a lot of moving pieces. It can be very overwhelming. Just go. The good news is, you know, you're going to get all those moving pieces, all the information through our university, but we don't want to leave you hanging. Now we want to help you be confident and successful with implementation. That's where the coaching comes in. That's where our private network comes in. And then you solve that problem. And a great analogy you can attach to the jigsaw puzzle is like, hey, you know, like she said, there's all these pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. Like that's just going to literally take the puzzle pieces and start numbering them for you. The right? back of each piece will be numbered. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly how he's going to help accelerate your results. And this is exactly why 90% of our community is doing this on a part-time basis, right? Because everyone's got a nine to five. Everyone's got a business they're running, but they're looking to get there fast. And they're trying to figure out what is the fastest, best, smartest way that I could get there. So they're looking to work with a coach just like that, right? To get them from point A to point Z. And then also for people who are being very, are very successful, they're trading a lot of time for money. Um, we know that they're on the phone because they don't want to trade time for money. They, they yep. want to be in control of their time. So it's always important that you, you, you figure that part out with them so that they can acknowledge that. And then say, you know, it sounds like what you're really wanting is that you're really wanting to generate something that can be, you know, passive income. Right. And they go, oh my gosh, yeah, I just, I'm so tired. I put 30 years in, I want to retire. I'm done. I'm done. Just go, oh my gosh, just go, that's awesome. You know why? Um, because with a business like this, you have to imagine it's like, you know, pushing a wheelbarrow uphill. You're putting the time, energy, and effort in, but it's upfront, right? Once you, once you get to the top, it's really free sailing coming down. So just go in the big picture. This is a very, this is a passive income, long-term wealth strategy. And so that it can kind of connect mm -hmm. for them. Thank you. Any other objections? No objections, Maurice, but I just want to say like super impressed. Um, it's been, I was listening to one of your calls actually yesterday, uh, actually me and Rich were, oh. but it's just so much fun to just watch you just talk. <laughs> it's, it's so like, <laughs> I was, I just was literally like messaging Rich right now. I was like, bro, it's, it literally feels like you're just like closing us right now. <laughs> you know? Um, it was very exciting. So I don't know. I just, yeah. And you guys can all do this. You guys, I didn't start out this way. Okay. I've been doing this for a little bit longer than most of you that are here. So it, it's a learning, it's a learning process, but you have to be active in wanting to learn. You have to want it. Um, so you have to challenge yourself. You have to learn. Follow my brother's Instagram page. He gives a lot of free content. <laughs> uh, can't stress that enough. Yeah. And then listen to calls, guys. If somebody on your team is rocking it, listen to their calls. See what they're doing um, that's maybe different than what you're doing. Even on other teams. Like I have people who tell me they listen to my calls. I think that's fine. I think that's great. I'm like, oh, <laughs> um, yeah. but listen to them. Um, I can even send some of my calls that have been hard. My like longer closed calls. <laughs> um, yeah. But you that, gotta stand the close. If you guys, if you guys, if you guys get on a call and at the end they say they don't have money, you can't stop there, okay? You have to clarify what no money means. <laughs> just go, okay, just go, you know, Richard, it sounds like, you, you know, you don't have the money, but let me, let me ask, is it that you don't want to spend the money or is it that you just genuinely don't have access to it? Not even through credit. Well, no, I have access. I just don't use credit cards. Well, now the guy's got the money. You got to, you got to stay, you got to stay, <laughs> you got to stay in the clothes. He's got the money so you don't get off. So yeah, now you have to, now you have to go, okay, just go, well, just go, what, then what's, you know, what has you hesitant? You got to figure out what's got them hesitant. And then you go kind of go from there, but you have to clarify what no money is because everyone's going to tell you they don't have money, but they have money. 
And I would say most of the people on the call with you guys do have money and they have a lot of money and people who have a lot of money and savings, guess what? They don't spend money. That's why they have money. So <laughs> yeah, people who are broke are easy to close. <laughs> yeah, they, they charge Louis Vuitton bags and drive Mercedes, you know, they live in an apartment. Right. And that's like, 100%. yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, you closed someone recently, right? Where uh, I think you took the last of his savings or something like that. And then he's recently gone on to produce a result. Jason, Jason. Are you talking you to me? Jason? Yeah, yeah. Jason, what is that? Remind Jason and his, you, you talk about Jason and his son, how you took their last dollar. Oh, and, yeah, 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 yeah. That was, the, um, his name wasn't Jason. I forget his name, but oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they like, yeah, they, they had, they had no money, <laughs> but they did it. Um, but they had you, cause this is the thing guys, if someone tells you, well, man, I only have $3,000. Like I had a guy for springboard. He was like, man, he's like, I don't, this is my last $3,000 after this. I'm like done. And I was like, well, I'll just say Jason, I forget his name. Well, Jason, yeah, you're, you're in a really bad spot. Just go to be truthful. Like $3,000, I mean, it's going to get spent regardless. I mean, either you're going to be screwed now or you're going to be screwed in three weeks, right? Either way, the money's gone. Um, so you have a choice here. You can just keep on like, you know, holding on to as tight as you can until it's gone in two weeks, or you can, you know, invest in an opportunity that can get you to somewhere, take you somewhere where you've never been before, <laughs> right? Either way, you're in a bad situation. You're going to lose it all anyways. You're just buying yourself time at this point. If you're going to lose your house because of $3,000, you're done. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so you have to be honest with people. So he did, he bought it. And guess what? I think he's on his second or third property. Right. Um, I forget the guy's name, but anyways, Jimmy. yeah. So same with this couple, they had no money and it was kind of like, well, they, you know, were scared to invest, but it was kind of like, they were in a bad situation, like mm -hmm. it's a time bomb. So you can, you can invest in an opportunity that can take you where you've never been, mm -hmm. or you can stay right where you're at and be homeless. Right. That's what Jimmy told us at the springboard event. Me, Christian, and Rich were there. We talked about it yesterday, Marisa, but he walked up to us. He's like, are you guys a sales team XYZ? He's like, you guys know Marisa? And we're like, oh, yeah, Marisa's Richard's sister. And then he was like, oh, man, like, you know, Marisa saved my life. He literally said Marisa saved my life, right? Not changed my life, saved my life. Because Jimmy was homeless. I think he was living in his car. He didn't know what he was going to do. He was going to run out of the money. And you told him like, hey, this is the opportunity. This is what you have to do because you're going to run out of the money anyway. Might as well spend it on something. He he's, went on he's only it. buying time to be completely homeless. Yep. Let's face he it. went on to do a few wholesale deals. He bought a house for himself that same year within like eight, nine months. And it was just cool to see him in person telling us how you saved his life. And it was just incredible. But that's what you guys are. You guys are lifesavers. That's what you are. <laughs> so you have to, you have to, you have to really believe that. And when you really believe it and you internalize it, guess what? You're not going to let somebody who needs this get off the phone because you know they're going to drown. Right? Um, so. Boom. Boom. <laughs> now, Maurice, what, one thing I'll ask is, um, would you say that every single one of your calls is the same? Pretty much? Like the um, flow? In terms of my flow, I would say yes. For the most part. I mean, it varies. But as far as my process... I, my process is my process. Um, yeah. So sometimes it changes. Like sometimes you get people on the phone who are just like, they want to take control. So obviously I have to work a little bit harder at keeping them on the sales trajectory. But for the most part, I mean, my discovery phase is my discovery phase. I don't move on until I know certain information because I already know that if I move on. What's the, what's the information that you need in the discovery to move on? Okay. What's, so I have that? to know exactly where they're at. So what is their job? What is their earning situation? What is their, you know, their time? I need to know, and I don't ask those questions directly. It's just through conversation. I, you know, I, I, I draw it out, right? Um, I have to know exactly why they're on the phone with me. Like, what is it that they want moving forward? Like, what are they trying to accomplish? And then from there, I need to have certainty on what is it that they need to get to the finish line? And I'll ask them like, what do you need specifically to get you to the finish line? So you can, you know, get out of, you know, being in bondage to this awful job that you're working 80 hours a week for and making $13 an hour, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, what, what is it that you need? And then right. I have to have clarity because if you don't know what they need, you guys, when it comes to pitching the program, what are you solving? If they don't have it in their mind, I mean, you know, they need this program to get them where they want to go, but they have to acknowledge it. It doesn't help if you know it. Yep. And, and I think a lot of what Marisa talked about today, guys, is clarifying why they're on the phone with you and then labeling with the problem, which is basically them saying exactly right. Like, that's it. Right. You, you're able to have them heard and understood. 
And then what she talked about earlier today is overviewing the past pain, right? Before getting into the problem. Would you say, Marisa, this is kind of in line with pretty much what you're doing on the calls? You're clarifying why the person's there. You're labeling them with the problem. And then you're overviewing the past pain to determine. You have to, you have to hit the pain, guys. You have to know why. Like, for instance, um, I get a lot of women on the phone. Okay. So when the women's saying like, you know what, I'm working, um, my daughter's going to be starting kindergarten. I really want to be that team mom. I really want to be involved in PTA. I go, ouch. I said, it sounds like, you know, you're not able to be present with your daughter because you're working. You have to tell them like, ouch, that sucks. Like you're not present. You have to acknowledge that they are not present. They are not being the mom they should be because they're working. Right. And then I go, I, and you have to, you have to highlight that. You know, um, you have to highlight the fact that like, okay, you know, you want to do these things. I mean, she still say things like, oh, you know, she's already five and, uh, you know, I don't want to miss out on anymore. Just go, man, just go time's a thief, huh? It's like you blink and they're 10, you blink, they're 15, you blink, they're out of the house. You have to highlight those things because it's a reality. If they don't make a decision today, that is the path they're walking. So you have to highlight, you have to, you have to um, emphasize that. Okay. Um, you have to make it hurt. So I had another lady who was in a very good situation, made a lot of money, like $20,000 a year, but she was not a good mom. She wasn't able to be there. I said, well, let me ask you, you're working 50, 60 hours a week. I'm like, you know, when you're off of work, how, how is that? How is that relationship with your kids? I mean, how's your energy level? I know I would be exhausted. I'm a mom. Being a mom is tough <laughs> and better yet working 60 hours a week. She's like, well, that's just it. I'm short with them. I don't answer their questions. I'm always like, I feel like I just don't give them anything that they need. I'm like, wow, you're not because kids need that. <laughs> right. And so at first I, I, the first couple of times I could see in her face, it was kind of like, she couldn't believe I, I, I acknowledged what she was saying, but then guess what? At the end, she didn't even hesitate. She just felt she pulled out two credit cards and did it. <laughs> because it was like, what was the option is either she continues where she's at, or she gives it a shot to do this and, and create something different. So she can actually be present with her children. <clears throat> okay. So it was women. That's a really good thing. Cause it, women get torn in so many directions, right? We get torn as being a wife, a mother, a, a, an earner. There's a lot of different places you're getting torn. <clears throat> Men, you know, they miss out on a lot with their families, you know, working. So highlighting that, you know, causes marital problems. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Some of the best closes that I know I've had is, is the ones where I've really overviewed the past pain and challenged them and, and went in deep into that pain, Marisa. And then even though I exhausted all my options and let's just say I didn't get them on that one call close, man, I'll get a text the next day or within that week saying, I couldn't sleep at night, Mike. Like I've been thinking about everything that you told me, like I'm ready to do this. And mm -hmm. that's happened so many times where I've gotten that text within a few days after that call, where it's just like, I haven't been able to stop thinking about what you told me, Mike. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you can dig in deep, like Marisa is saying, you, you're going to get that. And you're either going to get that on the call or they're going to be thinking about it right after the call. And you're going to have like really just rewired the way they, they think things. And ultimately yeah, you point out something really important, Mike, which is um, if you, if you're, you're spending the time on the call, do it right. Because it's true. If you do it right, even if they can't afford it in that moment, guess what? They're going to come back. So I've had people come back six, five months later. I had a guy who did Uber driving on the side to earn the $5,000 for a coaching program. So people will do what it takes. Um, so it's really good. If you're going to spend the time on the call, do it right. Don't skip the steps, you guys, because you're just wasting your time. Good stuff, Marisa. Good. Okay, okay guys. I'm glad it was helpful. <laughs> that, was, that was very helpful. Oh, good. A lot of good reminders, too, for me. Yes. Really powerful. Yeah, it's good stuff. Closing's fun. <laughs> it's fun. Um, it should be fun. And you're helping people, guys. Just remember that you're always, you're just helping, you're qualifying, you're solving problems. You're not selling anything. You can't I would sell people. look at myself like I'm a life coach and I would tell them, hey man, like I'm just being a life coach and I'm not trying to pressure you. And they would tell me all the time, Mike, I don't feel pressured at all. Even though I'm in the close, I've already went in like six, seven, eight times. They would tell me, Mike, I don't feel like you're providing any pressure, right? But even though, like, because I'm chat, like, I'm, I'm, I'm getting them to like just make the decision. But they can tell, like, I'm coming from a place of service and I care about them because of everything they told me. And they'll tell me, man, I don't feel pressured at all. Because I'll always say, man, I, I'm not trying to pressure you by any means. Hey, but you know X Y Z. They're like, no, Mike, I don't feel any pressure. Because the key, you don't want, want to pressure people. They know they need it. Yeah. It, it, it it's more about them than what we're selling. Right. Mm -hmm. It's really more about them, what they need than actually what we're selling. If you, if you only focus on features and benefits and how we're so great and why you need that, you're selling somebody. Nobody wants to be sold. 
<laughs> okay. I don't want to be sold. Um, I don't, I, I want to buy because I'm like, man, this is going to be great. This is really going to help me. Um, and that's how you change lives, right? Is by selling them something that's going to help them. And that's the cool thing is we, we sell tons of like phenomenal programs. No, like all of them. Life. Everything we sell is good. Yeah. One call closers. I mean, we, I mean, it's a phenomenal, um, company. I mean, every influencer that we work for is top notch. Every program is life changing. So anybody got any questions? Anything stick out? Just out of curiosity. I know Julie, I know you're super excited about Marisa being on call. <laughs> I love you, you Julie. <laughs> <laughs> Julie does a really good job of saying like, hey, you just don't know what you don't know. That's like one of Julie's signature lines. She, she drops it with that tonality too. Yeah. And, you, and you, you always have to work towards getting better, guys. I mean, if you, you know, like for me, when I started out, guys, I was like, man, if I could just do a thousand a week in commissions, right? If I could just do 4,000 a month, then it was like, okay, I'm going to do 2,000 a week, 2,000 a week, man, that'll give me 8,000 a month. Then it was like 3,000. All I need is 3,000 a week. That'll give me 12,000 a month. Then it was four. Now it's five. Then it's six. I mean, it's like you guys, it, 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 if you get better at what you're doing, my, my, nothing's changed. I'm just getting better. So right. guess what? My close rate goes up. So I'm getting, I'm doing exactly what I've always done, but now I'm doing five to 6,000 a week versus one. <laughs> okay, guys. So you have to perfect the game. It's there. There's so much, there's, there's so much impact you can have. You just have to, you have to do it right. Mm -hmm. You have to add that value. The, the, the prospect has to see the value. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. I think it was good for us to hear too. The programs you sell are more expensive than ours. And the program that we're going to start selling is going to be at the dollar part. So it's good to have, it's not about a dollar amount. No, but no, you can sell yeah. anything. Yeah, because um, my, 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 my spill is not, the, is not any different for 5,000 versus um, 20,000. I'm going right. to make a difference. Um, right. At the end of the day, everything it has to do with, is it serving them? Is it going to get them where they want to go? Do they see um, certainty in, in, in joining? Do they see hope? At the end, you know, at the end of the tunnel, mm -hmm. people are drowning guys. And you have to point out to them like, Hey, like you're surviving right now. But what I hear is that you really want to be thriving. You want to be present with your family. You want to be, you want to be, you know, you want to, you want a stable future. You want security. Um, you want certainty. You don't want to feel anxiety and stress, not knowing where the world's going and people who come to you and, you know, different jobs that are just so unstable. Um, mm -hmm. so you have to just bring that to light. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, guys. Julie, were you going to ask something? Oh, you're on mute. Yeah. The only thing I thank you, Marissa, so much. I, I, my whole goal is just to continue to chase mastery and you're such a, you epitomize that. So I'm very grateful for that. Oh, I was just so lucky good. listening to you and it's, you know, it's about being in part being bold, you know, like you mm -hmm. said, you're thinking of it anyway. So just be bold. It's the only opportunity that you have. You say things that they'll never hear from anybody else. They'll go back to their comfortable life and their friends and the people who tell them how wonderful they are and they're doing well, but they're not. They know deep down in their heart, they're, they're aching. They know that they have pain and they know that they need help. So we have to help them, uh, give them that encouragement and that push and be in their face. Mm -hmm. And that's what I see that you're doing. And you really are in their face. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, you, Thank you. you. Have to, yeah, yeah, you're right. You, you have to be bold. Bold's a good word. Um, and what I call it is being um, authentically assertive. <laughs> um, you got to be very authentic, but you also have to be very assertive. Um, and you have to realize also, guys, that the majority of people who get off the phone and don't buy, most of them are not going to come back. So you really do for the big pick for, for the most of the calls, you have a one, a one shot, right? Um, so, and most people can access $5,000. Okay. Um, that's usually money is never really the issue for certain people. It really is. And you usually can dive, you know, get that out in the beginning, but for the most part, they have money. One, one question there. One, one time somebody said to me, you know, well, and I, and I hear from time to time, but um, guys say, you know, I just don't make quick decisions. You know, just not like me. And I said, well, uh, is that true though? You know, like, think about this. Like, what if your furnace broke down? What if your car broke down? You'd have to make a quick decision. Are you going to get a new one? Are you going to get it repaired? Are you going to be, you know, go without heat for a few days? Like, you know, so what would happen in that case? 
where would you be resourceful? How, who would you go to? And I challenge people to challenge their thinking. And that's what it is. It's challenging their thought process. And another, another thing you could add on to that, Julie, is that when people say that to me, what I'll say is, I'll go, well, what makes you think that this is a rash decision? Decision. You've been at this for five years. <laughs> There's nothing rash about this. Or they've been thinking about it for seven you've years. Been thinking about it. You know, it sounds like, you know, you've been thinking about this for the last, you know, six, you know, six months to a year, you've been following that for three to six months. I said, I don't really sense that this is a rash decision. And you're not going to Vegas and putting, you know, $75, you know, $750 on, on red mm-hmm. or playing, you know, that's not what you're doing here. So let, let, let's talk. I think it's important. Let's talk about this. Like what makes you feel like you're making a rash decision? Have them talk it out. Cause a lot of times they'll start talking and they don't even know what they're going to say. Cause there's nothing to say. <laughs> so it's good to, to have them talk it out. Just go, let's talk about it. Or like, it doesn't even make sense what they said. Cause yeah, that's exactly what they said. Hearing. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, And I have definitely done that as a quick decision, but I said, is that true though? You just told me that you've been thinking about this for 17 years. It's Mm -hmm. been on your mind. Yeah. (laughs) And you have, yeah, you have to go back to what they've, what you have to, that's where discovery is so important. Cause if you didn't know that, (laughs) guess what? You have nothing to tie it back to. I had a call like that with a lady um, who I ended up closing where we got towards the end and she was just kind of just like, want to do the think about it aspects, but kind of felt like there was a part in there where she was just like, well, I'm just not sure how to make the decision right now type of thing. And then I remember just kind of challenging her on it a little bit. And then she tried to give me an answer, but her answer, like, it just turned into like mumbo jumbo. Yeah. She's like, well, it's just because like, I, she's like, I don't really know. <laughs> and you also, you guys, you also, there, there's an art in this too, because you don't want to lose a deal either. So for instance, I had a lady who just paid $15,000 for a coaching program um, two days ago. And I spoke with her the day before that. Um, she had the money. She, she was a little uncertain. We talked about everything, but the financial commitment was just a lot for her to make on the phone. I went in for the clothes probably four or five times, but then I could sense that in my head, I was like, okay, if I keep on going forward, I'm going to lose the deal. She's not going to close. I, I knew I could tell that she was not going to close. I said, the best thing for me to do right now is pull back keep the relationship in good standing um, let her know that I'm understanding her. I respect where she's at. And I felt very confident. I'm like, I know she needs this. She's going to come back. So I, I did. I said, you know what, um, Raquel, I said, let's do this. I said, cause I want you to feel very confident. It's a very big decision. I want you to feel confident with what you're, what you're deciding moving forward. So take your 24 hours, take it. I said, I'm not sure what's going to change between now and then, but if it's going to make you feel better, then it's worth it. Right. I said, so let's reconnect tomorrow. What time works for you? I said, you know, does 1115 work for you? So I put her on my calendar. And then what I did is I sent her an email afterwards that outlined the entire program, how I was super excited to help her get to her, whatever her goal was. I sent it one well, ways the next day we connected and she purchased. Um, and then she didn't want to purchase because there wasn't a guarantee, but then we had to work through that. But anyways, at the end of the day, she purchased. Um, so you also have to know like when, when to pull back with certain clients that, you know, are going to be a tool to call close. Because not everyone's a one call close and not everyone is even closable. And that I think requires a little bit of emotional intelligence, right? If you're still in for the close and they, they're they not trying to get off the phone, they're just sitting there and they're like still engaging with you, stay. But if you feel like, man, it's getting to be a little bit too much, they're kind of starting to feel like a little bit of like, oh man, I'm not, you know, then maybe what Maurice is saying, hey, back off, keep the good relationship, right? Then that'll be maybe a follow-up close off. Uh, they're telling you two, three times in a row, I'm not making a decision today. You know what? That's You're right, but I'm not making a decision today. Guess what? They're not making a decision today. <laughs> um, you can't change that. Um, and like I could have gone into challenging like, well, you know, how did your decision-making process work thus far? You know, you, you, know, you don't make decisions. You, I could have gone there, but guess what? Now I'm selling them and I don't need to sell her. She needs me. Not me, but she needs the program. So I didn't even go there. I don't go there. I know some reps will go there. I don't go there. Um, also, another thing that, you know, some, some people use silence. I personally don't use silence. The reason I don't use silence is I hate being in a conversation where there's silence. Like if my husband just, I, I, just is silent when I'm talking to him, I don't like it. I feel like it's bad for me. Now, there's times where silence is good. Like if I'm waiting for them to respond or to, to, to uh, you know, collect their thoughts. Yes, but I don't, I don't, you know, I, there's just certain things I don't do because I feel like it's putting unnecessary pressure and, and I'm not there to pressure them. I'm there to help them. That's me though. That's not every sales rep. There's sales reps who use silence and it, they do good. For me, it doesn't work because it's not genuine. <laughs> so, so you have to kind of tailor it to what works best for you because we're all different personalities. We have different temperaments. We have different um, communication styles. So don't do what I'm doing if it's not natural because then it doesn't come off genuine. <laughs> 